I will present today some words that we are developing in our uh, laboratory in the last uh, uh, in the last decade, maybe, and we are really interested in uh, to understand how the immune system can regulate the cardiac electrical function. So the word that I will present today, is, and as Marcela uh, introduced me, is the total receptor, NRP3, and A1B axis, and cardiac arrhythmias. So as, okay. So uh, where is the pointer? Okay. It's not working this one. Okay, now we're working, no? Can you see the pointer, no? Okay. <clears throat> so as you already know, the, the leading cause of death around the world are the cardiovascular, uh, cardiovascular disease. And unfortunately at the time, we, do, we don't know, and we know that we have several uh, cardiomyopathies and different cardiovascular disease. However, we, uh, we know, really, really know about the physiopathology of this disease. And we have a lot of, to, of, of things to learn about the uh, cardiovascular physiopathology. So in my point of view, these are mainly, uh, uh, this, the, the reason of that is, uh, or at least are involved in the, the, the heart was always considered in the last century maybe, as a, a pump and the muscle pump, no? But now we know that in the two last decade mainly, we know that the heart is much more complex than an pump. So we know that the heart has uh, different cells, different um, kind of cells, and not only fibroblast and cardiomyocyte or endothelial cells. So we know, and it's really clear now that we have different cells from uh, immune system as mat cell, dendritic cells, and T-Rex cells and monocytes, neutrophiles, and also the macrophages, you know? So uh, these, uh, these new scenarios uh, that emerge in, in, in cardiology is very interesting because an opening your window to understand different physiopathologies of and, and several and cardiac, cardio, or cardiac disease. So we can talk um, days maybe <laughs> about the different, the role of these different kind of cells as T-Rex cells in the infarct, for example. And we will focus today mainly in these kind of cells that the macrophages. And we know now, and the beautiful work of Epiman et al. in 2014, and describe that first time that our heart has, for example, um, resident macrophages. So this was a really interesting work demonstrating that our heart, in our heart, we have an, just an exclusive um, a population of, of macrophages in our heart that after some stress, we have a different source of these macrophages. So this, uh, this uh, broke of paradigm in, in, in the heart uh, bring different ideas about the physiopathology in cardiology. And it's not only in cardiology, in other diseases also, because usually we have this concept that the higher inflammatory or higher inflammation is always associated with an, some pathogen, as virus, bacteria, and a parasite. But now we know that this, we have also some state that we can name it as a non-infectious inflammation. This non-infectious inflammation involves different diseases as cancer, adaptive cardiac hypertrophy, 
and different disease related to lifestyle related disease that also have a higher inflammation, at least higher markets of inflammation, independently of the present different of the different microorganisms. So what have this, this node infection inflammation in common? So we can discuss better about or, or, or discuss in deep that, but um, usually the cytokines levels, the circulating and the local cytokine levels are increasing. And we can point at and several ones and kinetokines also. And with the cytokines, we can uh, point out the interleukin one beta and IL-6 and TNF-alpha with the nodules. In our work, we were concentrated and focusing in the role of the interleukin one beta. So in order to understand better what, for where is coming the uh, interleukin uh, one beta, and this is a cartoon of uh, macrophages, of one macrophage, so you can see that we have the one signal when we stimulate total light receptor four or total light receptor two, we increase the pro-interleucin 1 beta or the pro-interleucin 18. So in order to maturate these pro-cytokines, we need a, a second signal that usually is mediated by a, 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 a macromolecular complex, which the name of that is the inflammasome. So this inflammasome could be um, a, a conform it by different kind of node receptors. Here we will use this NRP3, the node 3 receptor that was the focus of our work. So the first question that we have after this, this, uh, the, this the, the new paradigm in medicine was, and um, uh, uh, was, and uh, is the il beta related with the cardiac uh, remodeling, mainly with the electrical cardiac remodeling, no? So we hypothesized, uh, hypothesized, that, uh, hypothesized that the il beta modulates the cardiac electrical activity directly activating its receptor. So the first set of experiments that we perform, <clears throat> we incubate during 24 hours life of, um, of rat heart, and you can see that the one beta was able to prolong the action potential, and this prolongation was preventing with the, uh, with the slides were also incubated with an IL-1 receptor antagonist. This prolongation was also associated with a lower density of the ITO current. You can see where we applied it and a, a voltage protocol in, 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 this, uh, in these cells, in the isolated cardiomyocyte, you can see the uh, control condition and after a, a 24 hours, we saw the lower uh, density of uh, ITO current. But what about the effect of Ilwambira in cardiac uh, human cells? So we use as a um, tool an um, embryonic stem cells derived cardiomyocyte. It was in collaboration with Dr. Uh, Fletchman in, in the University of Bonn. And we performed this experiment where we uh, recorded the same plate before to add the interleukin one beta and 24 hours the same place 24 hours after uh, incubate with the one beta. <clears throat> and you can see the QT or pseudo QT or the field uh, or, or, or the electrical field potential, no field potential duration, with prolonged after uh, 24 hours of the one beta. If we stimulate only the total light receptor two, for example, for example. With PAN3, we didn't observe any change, but uh, this, um, this IL-1 beta was able to increase this, uh, these parameters. And how this 
uh, this phenomenon was happening. So we now repeat the experiment in another set of experiments, but now we co-incubate, not only within one data, but also in other set of experiments in the presence of this peptide <clears throat> that inhibit the CAM kinase 2. As you can see, the co-incubation of IL-1 beta with the CAM kinase 2 inhibitor was able to prevent this IL-1 beta prolong the field potential duration. So with this data and other data uh, taken for different experiments, but now in the type, uh, type 1 diabetic model, we conclude that, for example, in diabetes, we stimulate, we have a high stimulation of toll-like receptor 2 <clears throat> that increase the circulating and local level. So if it was uh, interleukin 1 beta, so we were able to uh, observe it that it beta not only was observed uh, increased circulating, but also in the ventricle uh, samples. And we conclude that the activation of each receptor increase the phosphorylation and the oxidation uh, of the CAM kinase 2, increasing also the calcium sparks and increasing the ventricular arrhythmias. So this, this work was that we published in, in 2016 with Micaela and Gustavo, in natural communication, and just one year later, the group of Matthias Narendorf and published this beautiful paper that was um, have an, this um, editorial in, in Cell, showing that the macrophages not only are able to stimulate and to induce or increase the susceptibility of arrhythmias, but also are able to uh, maintain and to, uh, to perform different uh, direct contact as gap junction contacts or communications between uh, macrophages and cardiomyocytes. So with this, uh, in these uh, scenarios, we propose to study if other models where we have electrical impairment an increase of uh, increased levels of IL-1 beta, we also are able to, <clears throat> uh, to understand that the, the IL-1 beta is really the link between this disease. So uh, we know that patients with chronic renal ischemia have high risk of developing cardiovascular disease. So, and in this regards, and almost 70% of patients with a chronic, a chronic renal ischemia have arrhythmias or cardiac arrest. Are these people or are these diseases involved with the uh, impairments of the immune system? Are diseases, uh, 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 are the ear one being involved in that? So, in 2014, 2015, Marcela, who is just moderated this, this section, and had this idea and invite us also to participate in this work, where in, this, in, in her model, after one hour of ischemia, no, we, we clamp unilateral pediculus, arteria, artery, venous, and nervous, of the left uh, kidney, so for one hour. After that, we, uh, we take out this clamp, and after 15 days, Marcela and her group showed that this animal present um, cardiac hypertrophy. Interestingly, in this paper, Marcela showed that the lack of toll-like receptor 2 or the toilet receptor 4 were enough to prevent this ischemia reperfusion induced cardiac hypertrophy. So, in this model, you see by Marcela, and after published this paper, we, 
were together with Marcela in Sao Paulo, I remember, with Mayra, and we start to observe it really, really uh, in, in details, the data and all data that we have about uh, with what uh, we, uh, we learned about this model. And interestingly, <clears throat> we observed the kinetics of il vira, the circulating il vira. So you can see that after reperfusion, we observed the peak of il vira in the day eight after reperfusion. That this peak, this, this, uh, these elevated levels disappear after this day. And more interesting was that just in this day, we observed the longer QJ interval in this animal. But conversely with the, with the behavior of the Iwamira that decreased after the peak, the QJ interval prolongation was sustained by the time, as you can see. So we, uh, we, we were together to, to thinking about the mechanisms of that with Marcela, and we have in common one student <coughs> that was my PhD student and start to perform the, the postdoctoral fellowship with Marcela. And we propose the, uh, the following hypothesis. We test the hypothesis that the activation of the RP3 CASP1 l one vira axis is involved in cardiac electrical disturbance promoted by in renal ischemia reperfusion. So we perform the same protocol that Marcela performed in the, in the previous work. And after uh, this, uh, this protocol, we observed that the ischemic kidney was the, uh, have the, the weight decreasing compared with the jump miles, and the urea, which reflects the renal function, is one of the, the parameters that reflect the renal function, was increased as, as expected, no? What about il vira and the QJ interval? So we re, uh, reproduce the, 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 the data that's in the plus one paper, so the QJ was increasing, and we have one really, really important help in this time because and we have a strong collaboration with Ariel Escobar from the University of California. Ariel also is an ASHR member. And Ariel uh, really helped us because he installed in our lab some uh, uh, micro, uh, local field microscopy, which he developed. And it's really, was really, really important because uh, we were able not only to install this, but also uh, uh, Ariel and receive our students and, and Ainoa, Oscar, and Micaela were to Ariel uh, lab in order to train in. And this technique that allow us in the inter heart level to study both the action potential and the calcium transient simultaneously. So with this uh, system, we were able to demonstrate that after 15 days of reperfusion, the action potential of the uh, ischemia reperfusion miles show it longer action potential duration at 30% and also at, at uh, 50%. In addition, we observed in the calcium transient of these mice that this mice presenting a, a higher transient duration and time to peak, and the area under the curve also was uh, higher, and the tau of the decay also was, uh, was a higher in these animals. But what about arrhythmias? What about ventricular arrhythmias? So after caffeine dobutamine challenge, this animal presents higher uh, incidence and severity of arrhythmias, as you show here. 
<clears throat> with a monomorphic ventricular tachycardia, polymorphic ventricular tachycardia, and sustaining ventricular tachycardia with an other. So when we uh, can relate this, the heart of these mice in the aerial system, in the local field uh, table, we observe that after S1, S2 protocol, we were able to induce trigger activities in these hearts. In five of six hearts, we observed trigger activity induced after S1, S2 protocol. And this was accompanied by the impairment also in the calcium transient. So conversely, in champ mice, eh, any of the four animal tested have trigger activity. So we have an association between Irwan Bira, longer QJ, longer action potential, or increment in uh, ventricular arrhythmias. But our question was, are the macrophages really involved in this prolongation of QJ? If so, how? Are the macrophages, are the IL-1 vira really involved in that? Is the cause and consequence phenomena or is a, a, only an association, okay? So <clears throat> the first experiment we are forming for the follow, we use uh, one tool that is, uh, are the, um, some uh, liposomes um, which could put an clodronate and clodronate uh, and clodronate induce the macrophages depletion. So we inject the animal just one day before to the peak of Irwandira, okay, well, one day before, and we maintain the macrophages depletion during this uh, next uh, eight days. What happened with the renal function? So as uh, you can see here, the lack of the, the depletion of the macrophages partially uh, improved the kidney uh, size. However, the depletion of macrophages uh, were really bad for the renal function, suggesting that the macrophages are really are a vital uh, cells in the repair of a renal function after ischemia repercussion. What happened with the QJ? So the QJ, as you can see in the control and the depleted macrophages uh, heart, <clears throat> you can see that slightly decrease, but significantly, the QJ interval after this macrophage depletion. So how it's happening, why the, the, the lack of macrophage could induce uh, or could prevent this uh, longer QJ. So we first quantified the number of macrophages, but the resident macrophages, okay, in this heart, and as you can see here, the number of macrophages were similar between groups. So we cannot justify this QJ uh, interval improvement, at least for the number of, uh, for the quantity of uh, macrophages. However, when we analyze the NRP3, do you remember the signal one, signal two? the signal two that we have this inflammasome, NRP3, that is the key step, uh, usually at least is the, the key step to produce the il bira So the NRP3 uh, RNA, uh, RNA expression was uh, clearly increased in this, ma in this resident macrophages. So in this, in the next step, we test the hypothesis that the NRP3 and CASP1 are really involved in this phenomenon. 
So when it's picked it, we use um, two different knockout mice, one NRP3 and one CASP1 uh, knockout mice. And in both, after induced uh, ischemian reperfusion, you can see that we have not higher levels of IL-1 beta as in wild-type mice. So we were able to prevent this increase in IL-1 beta. So what happened with the kidney function? So I, as you can see, both RP3 and CASP1 were able to prevent this uh, decrease in the, uh, in the left kidney wave. In addition, the urea levels were normalized in these mice. It's no novelty for us because we know that this happening, you know, and several papers before us have shown that and have demonstrated that the lack of NRP3 or CASP1 are able to, uh, 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 to, uh, to improve the, uh, the renal function after uh, ischemia reperfusion. But what happened with the electrical cardiac function? With assays by a cache, we observed that both knockout mice, do you remember that in day eight, we opened the two lines? So we saw that in the day eight and in the day 15, both NRP3 and KSP1 knockout mice show a similar QJ interval uh, values comparable with champ mice. So, but it is related to I1 beta. Is the re really the I1 beta <coughs> involved in this phenomenon? So, to uh, reveal this question, we perform other set of experiments, and now, after the peak of I1 beta, just in the day eight, we start to treat the animals by a, a, a eight consecutive days with anakirna. Anakirna is an, an IL-1 receptor antagonist. And it's just a worldwide use in, in, the, in the arthritis rheumatoid and in other diseases. So, the kidney, uh, the kidney cells, so the kidney wave and the kidney function was not improved, but the lack of the ill one beta. However, all the animals treated with this uh, I1 beta uh, antagonist was able to decrease the Q shape interval. What about the action potential? What about the trigger activity in this heart? So the action potential was shortened when compared with the ischemia reperfusion mice. And also when we stimulate with S1, S2 uh, protocol, we only observe the normal response either in action potential and calcium transit. Only one of seven mice, uh, heart mice, uh, evoked trigger activity, comes at five, uh, five of six observed after ischemia reperfusion. So, in conclusion, uh, in this work, we can conclude that the both NRP3 and CASP1 are molecules essential to renal injury and cardiac e electrical disturbance, or at least to QJ interval, that was the, the, the unique parameter measure. And in addition, that IL-1 beta secreted is responsive, uh, in response to ischemia reperfusion is an uh, arrhythmogenic cytokine and the link between kidney injury to cardiac electrical dysfunction. So this, this work was um, published um, in GMCC last year and was uh, the covering the, in June. So we are really 
prut for that, for that with the GMCC, for this opportunity. I would like to thank all collaborators that were involved in all of this uh, work that I presented, mainly Marcela, who conducted this last work that I presented. We conducted together uh, uh, and published uh, together this, uh, this, uh, this work. And I would like to thank uh, several ones that were in, uh, involved, mainly Micaela, who was, uh, who performed several experiments in this, uh, in this work. And I know also Oscar, Igor, and Tabata, who performed the uh, uh, NRP3 uh, uh, RNA expression. And our great collaborator also, uh, Claudia. In, and uh, our lab now, and in quarantine, Bruno, Oscar, and Narendra, who are PhD students, Guilherme, who is an uh, MD, PhD student. We have a program in our university. And Larissa, an MD student. And uh, I really want to thank also to Archimedes, our uh, actual postdoc in our lab. So thank you so much for your attention. Okay. So thank you, Emiliano, for your presentation. Uh, it's a very good work, <laughs> I think. So uh, let's go to the questions and answers, okay? So we have for now three questions. So I will read, then you can uh, uh, read also in your computer. So uh, thank you for, from Christopher Oshi. Uh, thank you for the real nice talk. Uh, if I understood correctly, you recorded the action potentials and calcium transients simultaneously uh, and saw changes in both with renal ischemia reperfusion. I was wondering, did you see any difference between the coupling of action potential and calcium transient, for example, time on to one set of the calcium transient following the polarization? I forgot one question. Okay. Can you answer this one? Okay, the first answer to Daniel Johnson, okay? So, okay, uh, so for, okay, I will start for that, okay? Yes, yes, you can answer that. that I okay, so about the heart rate, we don't, uh, we don't, know, uh, we don't know to observe uh, changes in the heart rate. And in addition, usually the QJ interval is not affected by, by, the, uh, by the heart rate, differently with the QT that it is um, a, a conditioned by uh, changes in the uh, in the heart rate. So the second one that you say, I understood correctly, you require action potential, calcium transient time, and so change in both with renal. Do you see any difference in the coupling of the action potential and calcium transient? For example, time to set calcium transit for the producer. Okay. Um, uh, Christopher, thank you so much for, for, for your question. And um, so, if I understand the question, is the calcium transient following the polarization? And usually, we put um, really, really close the both the, uh, the action potential pipette, microelectrode with the, the optical fiber, you know? And usually, and in the, almost in the same point. And we were able also to measure in some time, uh, I remember also for this paper, and uh, the, the velocity of conduction between two points. And the problem is we are just measure only in the epicardial, you know, we are not able to see the endocardial or the transient or the transmural difference, you know, between one and, and the other point. So in our experience, we are able to, uh, to, to record together the action potential uh, almost in the same point of the calcium transient. I don't know, Davor, uh, if it's 
was um, answered or you have... So, so I, think, I think what Chris is saying is that whether you've actually looked at the timings from the voltage signal, upstroke of your voltage signal, and then the upstroke of your calcium, maximum upstroke, and if there's a change in the timings between one and the other following, let's say, ischemia reperfusion injury, you know, something like that. So following any treatments. So I think that's what he was referring to. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, but I, I, I didn't see it, you know? Uh, particularly because, you know, towards in the last slide, you showed that on your voltage, when you do S1, S2, there's no difference in the voltage. But actually, to me, it looks almost like you have uh, alternance, calcium alternance uh, in your calcium signal. So some, maybe it's interesting to look at. No, it's not the calcium alternance. It's okay. because... Uh, can you see? I am sure the, 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 the I don't know, uh, one minute. No, 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 it's not the calcium alternance. No? Okay. No, no, absolutely not. No, I will, I will, no, no, I understand your question. No, no, uh, here. Yes, in that one. Then. Um, okay, when, when you perform the S1, S2, yeah. we are just, and um, uh, here, uh, can you see my, my one or my other? Laser. Oh, I see. Uh, okay, fine. So therefore, you had less time. This is S two. Okay, this is S two. So we are we I are see. performing the stimulus in the in the late oh, five uh, phase three. You know, phase sure. three. We had less time for so the. When SRP. you do that, you you have a lower response because yeah. you have, and it's lower. You have not the the great response. You know, is no. the S two? It's here. Maybe we will have the normal calcium transit, you know? But when you perform it before, it is uh, expected that you have and the lower response and usually the lower calcium response, you know? No, no, I understand. I, I okay. misread the S1, S2, yes, fine. Okay, so okay. we are question. Nice talk, thank you, do you have throw? So about no, just, the just a minute, we're going to have the, the first question. Just a minute. Yeah. Please. Hello. So Hello. I have the Daniel Hello. Johnson. <laughs> no, the Daniel Johnson is the first question. I forgot. Sorry, Daniel. <laughs> so the first question is enjoying your talk so far. Thank you. No, I, I answered it. I answered it, Marcela. Yeah. So you want to answer that, yes. Um, yes. But, ah, okay, you are answered now. Okay, okay. So. Yeah, because they asked me about the QG interval. Yeah. and potential proarrhythmogenic yeah, remodeling, yeah. remember? Yeah, yeah, I answered that about that we don't... Uh, and I also comment about that it's not uh, um, involved in the QJ interval. So, William Quetze, nice talk, thank you. Do you yes. have so about mechanism by which activation may lead to cardiac defect and action potential lengthening. Ah, excellent. Beautiful question. I, I love it, you know, <laughs> and we are looking for that. <laughs> we are trying to really understand what yeah. is the real mechanism, you know, William. And in our first paper in, in Nature Communication, we uh, uh, we saw something about camp kinase 2 with the group of Martin Villa Petrov in Argentina also. And uh, we observed at least some increase in the phosphorylation and oxidative state of uh, camp kinase 2 okay. uh, after incubation with an E1 beta. I, I don't know if, uh, and I, I know that we cannot put all of weight in this, uh, in this molecule, maybe now, but and I think that maybe this is one of the, the, the ways, no? Rosanna Bassani, good to see you, Rosanna. Beautiful. It's our uh, uh, ESHR Latin American member. Uh, thank you. Where, where all AP changes and the regular attribute to the ITO decrease? No, I don't believe that. No, Rosanna. I think that um, other 
actor contribute uh, to increase this uh, action potential duration, not only the 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 the, the, the down of, of of ITO. So Hector Barajas, Hector, <laughs> beautiful to see you, Hector. And then Hector was an my great friend in in Masonical Medical Research Laboratory in 2011 during my postdoctoral fellow. So my question is very simple. I would like to know how this work can be translated for clinical use today, seeing a different bachelor between the different, 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 different. Okay. Um, Hector, excellent question. I think that the great, or at least the best, um, answer that I can give you now is with the uh, is, is that several uh, clinical trials were conducted and are ongoing now using the IL-1 beta blockers in order to prevent and cardiac uh, or, or, or improve the cardiac function. So I think that um, uh, uh, is promissory. At least we need to try and to understand what the clinical trials um, talk for us. You know, we need to, to see and to wait the result. But we know that we have several clinical trials ongoing now uh, around the world in this, uh, 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 in this point. In different diseases, uh, mainly vascular disease, and in thrombosis, it was really clear, several uh, uh, words, and some ones in, uh, in cardiac, uh, myocardial infarct also. So, Rosanna, another question. Sorry, Do you think Emiliano, that actual potential? Emiliano, sorry. Um, are any yeah. of these trials being uh, undertaken in patients with cardiorenal syndrome? Sorry? Are any of these trials being undertaken in patients with cardiorenal syndrome? I mean, I'm not familiar, so that's why I'm asking. I'm... With cardio, I, it was just co the, the connection. Cardiorenal with... syndrome. Uh, any patients with cardiorenal syndrome? Mm, okay, I don't know. Okay. Uh, but not yet. <laughs> so not yet. To cardio, yeah, yeah, not yet. Yeah. Well, your work seems to suggest they should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the other question of Rosanna. Do you think that the actual potential prolongation would be the main mechanism underlying the trigger activity? No. No, Rosanna. I, I think that not. That is one of the actors in this uh, big picture, but not the unique one. I, I personally don't believe that only the action potential prolongation is enough um, to induce trigger activity. And, you need to have other players involved in this in this phenomenon. And this is, is my my concept, no? So what do you, Milano, what would you suggest? You, you think there's tissue remodeling as well that has to happen? We have <laughs> tissue remodeling. We have also an, uh, we we need to, to remember always that we are, uh, our heart is not isolated heart. We are in the, the human. <laughs> so we have hormone driving, we have a autonomic nervous system also involving, and we have different actors that could contribute. I think that obviously the longer action potential is a really important, maybe as uh, is the is a vital, uh, vital one, but is uh, but we cannot at least discard that other component also are involved in the phenomena, you know. Sure, but I guess also you know the changes in your action potential duration were not large; they were they were actually fairly small, I would say. So you know, probably in this, this is not the mechanism particularly for this particular disease um yes yes i agree with you but and um, i think that um some work but, uh, from ariel escobar lab and that showed that last year i was i have i was really glad with uh, ariel invite me to participate in this uh, journal and um, general physiology last year 
where it's clearly that the phase one of the action potential defined, no, and uh, the, the calcium entrance in the action potential in, uh, in mice, at least in mice, okay? So for that, we always uh, measure the QJ interval, the early repolarization uh, in these mice, uh, in these animals. And you can see that the actual potential 90 uh, at 90 percent is almost similar. However, the actual potential at 30 percent is low, uh, longer. Okay. So, Hector, again, uh, how feasible is to measure the late sodium in the mouse heart? This is another uh, movie. <laughs> A very good question, Hector. We can discuss about. So, Luis Gonano. Hey, Emiliano, do you know if an achimal has been used to prevent sepsis dependent cardiac damage? And Luis, and really good to see you. Luis is a, a young representation of the, of the ES chart in Latin America. So, thank you, Luis, for, for attending this, this talk. And Luis, and some people use it, the Anna Kirna. We, use, we perform an experiment and with a really, really several and sepsis uh, mice model, which failed. We were not able to prevent or to revert the sepsis induced and this cardiac impairment. Even so, even so, that we were able to decrease and almost to put in zero the cytokine levels. So demonstrating more one times that where the heart is not only the isolated an organ, no? that is uh, in the, <clears throat> is in the environment that is really complex. So Daniel Johnson following up Ro Rosanna, do you look at SR calcium release and its parts? Uh, Yes, in the type two, in type one diabetes model, in this uh, experiment in the ischemia reperfusion, no. In this uh, first paper in the Nature Communication, yes, and this uh, experiment were conducted by uh, Martin Villa Petrov in Argentina, <coughs> and we observed uh, an increase in the number of the sparks. For this reason. We, uh, we, we conclude that the spark also are increased in this uh, type one diabetes model induced by streptocytosin, okay? Uh, Hector Barajewe, uh, is any electrical and electrical remodeling after the single cell dispersion or smarts? Um, I don't know, Hector, it's a really good question, you know? Um, if you refer to the procedure of an isolated cardiomyocyte, we know that yes, we always have some, uh, some problem with the uh, heart isolation, as was a beautiful talk here by uh, Davor and the, the Davor group, no? I remember it was beautiful and two or three weeks ago, uh, talking about just that and proposing that the new method to isolate and and, it, and cardiac isolation. And David Daniel Johnson, a, a spontaneous calcium release even? No, only a, a sparks. We don't see, we didn't see uh, uh, calcium waves, for example, uh, in the Taiwan diabetes, okay. Thank you, I have a super well, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much for, uh, for the questions. I think that we answered all. Yeah. You were very oh, good, Mariana. You. you were the chair and the speaker. Yes! Oh, <laughs> I have to do anything here. <laughs> so congratulations. I have one more question now, the third team here. I think it's one uh, of them. Yeah, Hector Bajadas. Emiliano, I miss you the best grill and Milano cookies. In Utica, in okay, Utica. Hector, thank you so much. I miss you too. <laughs>
There, there you go. I think a reunion is uh, warranted when this, uh, when this COVID is over. And then you can have some grilled, <laughs> grilled meat and cookies. <laughs> okay. So thank you, Emidan, for the presentation. Uh, thank you, Dever, for this opportunity again. And uh, that's it. So. No, but also, Emiliano, okay. I'd like to thank you because obviously we had a different talk today. And Emiliana really kindly stepped in at a very, very short notice and really appreciated it and, and gave a really, really great talk on a topic that's clearly highly interesting. I mean, macrophages in the heart are quite a hot topic now. So, uh, so really great stuff. I, I really enjoyed it. Okay, thank you, Deborah. And again, congratulations for your initiative. And it was really good. And I think that the quality of the talks are beautiful and the attempts uh, are uh, impressive. So thank you uh, so much for the dedication also to International Society for Heart Research. Thank you. Thanks, Emiliano. Thanks, Marcel. Thank, thank you all for attending. Bye. Thank you, bye, bye. See you all tomorrow. Okay, you. bye.